Hello everyone, I hope you are well. Welcome to another video. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for supporting my channel. I really appreciate you guys. If you are new, welcome. My name is Kelly. I have been trading futures since around 2020. I've been trading futures full time since around June 2022. I primarily trade NQ. I also trade occasionally gold, oil, and the ES. I am a price action trader and I use Renko Bricks to trade. That's what you're looking at on my screen. These are Orenko Bricks. I created this channel as a way to more efficiently create some trading videos that I wanted to share with my friends and family who were interested in learning how to trade. And the channel has grown from there. So every week I post new content. Either I share my own trade recordings or I introduce different strategies. I talk about different price action concepts. So if that kind of content is interesting to you, please consider subscribing. As my channel has grown, the scam artists have come out to play, pretending to be me, reaching out to people, asking you to purchase or subscribe to some kind of signals. Please know I do not market any affiliate links. I do not sponsor any products. I will never ask you to purchase anything. I think there are enough YouTubers out there peddling stuff. I am not about that. My channel is just to support the trading community. That is all it's about. Everything that you see on my channel is free and I, please don't get scammed by anybody pretending to be me, especially on Discord. Since I am a price action trader, all of my templates and concepts and setups will work on any market. You can use them for Forex, you can use them for different sessions, you can use them for stocks. You might just need to change the brick sizes. If you're not into Renko's and you prefer candlestick charts or Heiken Ashi, you can certainly change those will work as well. Of course, you should always do your own back test and forward test and make sure any strategy, template, setup is profitable before you take it to live markets. Never just take something new and run with it. You know, that's a fast way to lose money. All right, well, with all that said, let's get started. So I've been promising to do some trading videos and really better explain how I trade, what my setups are and all of that. Um, I'm over my COVID and finally, you know, got my voice back here. So I'm going to start a series. I've already made a video about round numbers and how I use volume profile. So what I'm going to do today is go over all of the charts on my screens and explain what they, these things are and what I'm using. So in the Google Drive, I've got a folder called Kelly's Personal Charts. All of my older versions of these charts are in this folder. The current charts are all right here. And then if you go to chart templates, we're looking for the entry chart with Delta. Here's all the chart templates with no paid indicators. These are the ATM templates, templates I'm going to talk about. All of the indicators you need for these charts are here. I drew a little picture here of where to install these things. So you're going to drag the chart templates into your chart templates here and you're going to drag the ATM strategies into your ATM strategy folder here and you're going to go to documents, Ninja Trader, templates. That's how you're going to access those two folders. So you're just going to download those from the Google Drive and install them there. I do have a video on how to install templates. You can look at if you need some additional help. And then I just put a picture here of all the indicators that are loaded on each specific chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my charts here and then we're going to do some comparisons side by side and I'm going to explain what all the indicators are and what I'm using them for. So if you watched any of my prior videos, you'll probably notice that my charts change a lot. The indicators at least on them change a lot. A lot of times I'm just testing out different ones. I like to create different kinds of chart templates. You know, what works for some one person might not work for another. So I like to have some variations. That being said, my strategy doesn't change. I don't need really indicators to trade. I just like to use them. So I am a trend continuation. I buy pullbacks in a trend. That is my trading setup. And I also trade ranges using volume profile rotations. Those two things don't change. And the indicators I use on my chart are just tools to help me establish what the market's doing, if it's ranging or trending. A lot of different indicators can do that. So I'm just testing out different indicators. I 
you know, I have a lot of different variations of my chart templates in the Google Drive for you guys. Find one that, you know, works for you, you know, something that you can easily identify what's going on and use it, you know, just stick with one. Don't, you know, switch it around. I, again, I just want to be careful because I think a lot of traders get messed up trying to change from strategy to strategy to strategy. I'm not changing my strategy even though my charts look different. And I just wanted to make that clear. All right, so I'm going to start with my large brick chart here. What we have on this chart are the prior day high and low. The high is blue, the low is red. I've got volume profile on my chart. We have Orenco bricks. These are for NQ. They are set at 32.80.160. I have 120 days loaded because of volume profile. If you're not using the volume profile, you could just load like 10 days probably would be sufficient. I've got the VWAP on here and then I have got on here the Trend Magic. So this white line here represents the new trading day. Every white line starts a new trading day. What I use this chart for is I can see my full day picture in Renko's. So this was the full day from Thursday. And you could see we came above the prior day's high. We pulled back down below it. We came back again. And then we came back below it. So we never got an entry long here. We came above it and we came back into it. We popped out a little bit, came back, popped out a little bit and came back. But we did not get the confirmed entry. What we would have been looking for was for that blue line to hold price and for us to continue up. And that just never happened. And then we came down. So we were in a trading range uh, with a downward bias. So we basically came, this was Wednesday's price action, a very tight range. We opened above value area high. We continued up. We came back to the prior day's value area high. It became support. You could have took the long here and went up. And then we came back into it. Once we crossed below there, that would trigger volume profile traders and they would go short and they would take their first target at the POC, their second target at value area low, which is what we call the volume profile rotation. I've made a video about volume profile. You can go check that out. We also see we have a gap in the volume profile here. So I would be looking for, if I saw this profile, I would be looking for a reversal down to fill in that gap. This would have been my first target. We got a little bit lower, but at any rate, that's what the, the 32 brick chart is for. It shows me the full day picture. This was Friday. I can see we're in an uptrend. We've got some volume profile to fill in down here. On the free version of this chart, this is what the free version looks like. You have basically the same thing minus the volume profile. So you're going to use this chart to identify the trend and just get an overall picture of the full day. So you can see here, we if we break above the prior day's high and we pull back into it and it becomes support, then we continue up. If we go up to the prior day high and it is, becomes resistance and we continue down, then we're probably in a trading range. So that's what I look for. I look for a breakout of yesterday's range on volume profile or a continuation of the range or a rotation if it's a trading range. This helps me identify whether we're in a trending market or a ranging market. All right, to the left of my large brick chart are my three amigos, I call them the session charts. I've got the Dow, the S&P, and the NQ. And I'm just gonna open one. These are 30 minute candles. They're set to the New York session, which is RTH. Here's the data series for that. Here we are right here, CME US index futures RTH. I trade primarily the New York session. That's why I use these. And what do I use them for? I use those to mark the gaps. So like right here, you can see we opened with a session gap. I marked that gap. Right here, we open with a session gap. We open down and we came up to fill it. Usually when we open with a gap, we come back and fill it. Today, this time on Friday, we went up 
and we made a gap and go. We didn't come back and fill it. But right here, we opened, we gapped up on the open. We opened up here. We came down and we filled the gap. Here we go. Another gap and go day. We gapped up and we continued up. Most times we come back and fill the gap. Occasionally we don't, but a lot of times we do. Okay, so every line here represents a new day. What happened here? We gapped up and then we came back and we filled the gap. Here we go, we gapped up, we came back and we filled the gap. Here we are, another gap and go situation. This is a big gap that we just got got up and go and we still haven't filled that in. So I'm, we will come back and fill it in, so I'm just leaving it marked on my chart. So you get the gist. I like to know where the session gaps are because we usually come back and fill it. I don't base all my trade decisions on it, but I know if we have a gap that I need to be care careful and watch that I don't get, you know, stopped out trying to trade a trend in a gap when we didn't fill the gap. Always mind the gaps. Okay, so the other thing that I use these charts for is confluence. I wanna see these three markets going in the same direction. When they're not going in the same direction, that means we're either chopping or ranging. The best trades are going to happen when all three of these are going in the same direction and the dollar is going in the opposite direction. If you've watched any of my trading videos, you know I use this trading view chart. There is a link to this chart, which I do share. I've got sharing on in the video description. We have the NQ, the ES, the Dow, and the dollar. Now I do have a pro plan on trading view. It comes for sale like 70% off every year at like Black Friday time. And I renewed, this is my second time I renewed it. I also pay for live data. If you don't have live data, and it wasn't expensive, I think I paid like $60 for two years of data. But if you don't have live data, then your, your data is gonna lag 10 minutes, okay? But you can get the free plan of TradingView and you can use it without the data or you can get the free plan on trading view and purchase data or you can get the pro plan like I have but I kept these indicators limited to five so that you could use them on the free plan so on these charts are I have added on an ICT indicator I know we have not a lot of ICT traders all it does is tell me the ICT gap I guess that's what you call that the most recent the closest ones and then it gives me the areas of interest which just seem to be like the uh, order block areas to me I'm not an ICT trader, but they seem pretty reliable here. I've got a, a mod RSI on here and volume. I've also got divergence and there are alpha trend buys and sell signals, which I don't use, but I left them on there in case somebody wanted to trade. Like the uh, longer term charts and swing trade. So anyway, like I said, these um, are 24 hour bricks. They're not set to New York session. So I like to see them all going in the same direction and the dollar going in the opposite direction. And I just keep this on my other screen and I refer to it when I need to. All right, next up we got the medium term chart. I've got the Orenco bricks here. This is for NQ. They're set at 16, 40, and 80. On my chart, I've got, again, volume profile. I've also got the daily pivots, which give you the R1 and the S1 targets. R1 is resistance, S1 is support. Got the daily open which is the open for the day uh, so whatever the daily cope candle current day open is that's what this line prints for me i also have on here the tdu initial balance indicator i don't use it for the initial balance i only use it to plot the new york open i'm going to tell you that this level is very important we didn't come back to it today but most days we come back to it and when we come back to the daily open often or a couple times, we're in a trading range. So definitely want to have that on your chart. You know, a lot of times you'll see, like here we are, we, we kind of chop around the New York open. And this is why we use the initial balance. I did a video on initial balance and volume profile. I'll link to it at the end of this video. But as you see here, we usually chop around for about the first hour. And that's what this initial balance is. It's the first hour of trading after the open, and then we break out in a direction. So here you can see we broke out above, I would say this box of range here. What time is this? 9.48. Okay, so we opened here, 
this box expands all the way up until 10 10 30 for the first hour but then we did break out we pulled back we we came back to it and then we went up i prefer to take a retest versus a breakout because you know 80 percent of breakouts fail like we broke out here a little bit we came back in we came back out and it went it didn't pull back and give us an entry here unfortunately but you know that's just how it goes some some days you want a better you want a better setup like here we go we broke out of the the box and then we came back in if you took the breakout there you got stopped out but if we came down here we broke out again if you took that breakout you know depending on where your stop was you got stopped out once again depending on where your stop was you got stopped out but here the box held here we got our reversal pullback entry and we got an entry and we got a nice run so it's just safer to always wait for the retest you know sometimes you're going to miss it and that's just how it is so here's the free version same thing you just don't have new york session open on this chart and you don't have the volume profile you can just mark the new york session open you don't need an indicator to do that and on the bottom i've got delta here and i'm going to talk about delta more with the next chart all right so now we come to my entry chart this is my small brick renko's this is the chart that i use to place my trades now i don't use this chart necessarily to identify the trend direction i use it just to enter on this chart, I'm going to start at the top. I have got the Pat's toolbar. It's got a lot of drawing tools for me. It helps me. If you, you'll see me draw my round number levels with that one. You've got arrows on here if you want to mark your trades. If you just hold your uh, cursor over it, it will give you what the tool is. But here we go. We got a trading range uh, tool here. And you could like save the colors or you can change the colors if you want it up here. Okay, here's the Fibonacci extension tool. How we use that is if we want to see where the price is going, we go from one point to the next, we click and we drag it down to the bottom and it'll give us our extension target. So right here, 855, that's how you use that. You want to use that on a higher time frame though. The Fibonacci retracement tool. Again, you grab it from one pivot point to the next, pulls back, give you the levels to pull back. You know, the, the futures market likes to pull back to the 50% a lot, so you should want to know where that is when we got a big leg going. Then I've just got the line drawing tool. I've got my trend channel tool. This one just kind of like a linear regression channel, but there is also the regular trend channel right here. And then if you want to delete, if you have drawings on there and you want to hide them, you can click that. If you want to delete them all, you can click the trash can. There is even a text box. You can draw some notes. This is a free indicator. It's in the, in the package for the free version of my chart. Okay, I've also got the TDU uh, order panel here. I have got the TDU round numbers indicator. And round numbers traditionally are numbers that end in 00255075. You'll hear me talk about logical levels a lot. Those are round numbers. Now, I don't necessarily go by just the round numbers of these numbers. You know, I draw my round number zones by what makes the most sense. So, you know, I look for an area near a round number like here's 40 that has a lot of touches that I expect to have another reaction at. You know, the more touches, the better. Up here, I can see... 80 is clearly a relevant round number. So mine is 80, not necessarily 75. So, and the reason that I think these round numbers are so relevant are, you know, when banks and big institutions place their orders, they're not coming in at some like random number, like 58.25. They're saying, you know, put, put the orders in at 50, 75, 25, 100. So you often see reactions. That doesn't mean you should trade off of these levels. Just expect there might be some kind of reaction. You might get a pullback entry. On my bricks here, you see these white bricks are um, called engulfing candles. And what they are basically is traps on candlestick charts. And you see it coincides with the round number here. Here we got another one. It coincides with the round number. 
Here we go, another one, round number. So expect to have some kinds of you know reactions at those round numbers. Now you can see the, the bigger the round number, the more reactions you're going to get. 900, we chopped around to a lot. I've got the TDU initial balance on here. That is also a paid indicator. It just plots the New York open for me. I've got the TDU half trend on here, and I've also got order flow VWAP. So the half trend is this yellow line. When you see the, the half trend is yellow, that means uh, shorts, and when it's blue, that's longs. I've got a 50 EMA on here, and then I've got the VWAP. And this just helps me to stay on the right side of trades. And then, of course, I've got the daily open. Okay, then down here, I've got the MACD. I took the histogram off. I've just got the crosses. What I look for when I enter a trade is the blue line above the red line for long entries and the red line above the blue line for short entries. When I see this, I'm not obviously going to take any longs. And when I see this, I'm not going to take a short. Okay, but you see we got the crossover on the short. And then here on the bottom, and this is the whole reason behind this new chart template as I came across this uh, delta momentum indicator, and it's pretty awesome. It's very similar to one that they use in a really fancy and really expensive paid indicator suite that's ridiculously overpriced. The fuck out of here. You might have come across um, some of the, the guys' videos, I think, that does that. That suite comes with a lot of stuff, but it also, I think, revolves heavily around this um, Delta indicator. But here we are. We found a free version, so we don't need to pay that whole like $5,000 package for that. And as you see here, the Delta, I've replaced the volume with the Delta. You know, we get these um, hills here. We got the hills up and down, hills up and down, hills up and down. And what I noticed is, well, one, I mean, you can use these for entries, signals, in a trend. If we're downtrend, then you can use the start of the delta for an entry, for an entry. But what I also noticed is that you can use it for reversal signals. So what I did was, and I was just testing it out, is I put lines down here at 800 on the top and 800 on the bottom just to give me a baseline. And you see here we get this big green delta push, right? And then we wait for the MACD cross, which we got here. And we got a crossover of the Trend Magic and the 50 EMA, and we got an engulfing candle. That is an amazing entry for a reversal. Okay, so here we got two delta flags, three delta flags pushing up into that level. Now we're going to watch our MACD. Here we go, we got a cross and a short signal, and we got a reversal entry. Now, we didn't get a qualified reversal entry here because the price was in between the two levels. You, you should really wait until they cross over, and this becomes yellow, and then the yellow trend magic is below the white EMA. So you got a scalp here if you took that 85 to 25 to 75. You got a scalp on that entry. But here you see we got the big push and then it turned yellow. We got the cross. We got an entry. You could even have taken the first pullback here and you got a nice a nice swing down. So that is one way you can use this delta to ent enter or that's two ways actually you can use the delta en to enter. So how I trade is I use my Amigos chart to help me stay on the right side of the trend. I also use my large brick chart to see the full day picture. So I am definitely trading with the trend. I'm watching out for any pitfalls like, you know, volume profile gaps. Am I possibly trading into value area high or low or a POC? You know, am I making a rotation? How, where do I stand in terms of the yesterday's high and low? Am I in a range? Am I in a trend? I can see all that here in this little this little tiny window. I can see the full day picture. Then I've got the IB box and the medium term chart bricks. And I don't trade against the bricks here unless I'm taking a reversal. I generally don't trade against the bricks of this chart here. 
So this current brick is still working. It's not closed yet. We always go by the, the prior brick, which is the closed one. So I'm only looking for longs. This is green. Over here, the same thing. I'm looking for longs. If this is green and this is green, I'm looking for a long here. If this is red and this is red, I'm looking for a short here. And I've got the IB box on here, so I can see if I break out. I can see if I'm in the range. I, you know, to be honest, I don't really use the IB box, but I use it to call out trades because I know other people are using it. So I use this. I call it trades in the Discord a lot. So I'm using this to kind of guide people that are using this that don't have volume profile. And some people just like initial balance. One thing about initial balance is if we open cl closer to the bottom, expect us to go to the highs. If we open closer to the top, expect us to go to the lows. That's another thing I'm looking at. So I have confluence here. These three guys are going in the same direction. My amigos are going in the same direction. I'm following this candle. This one should ideally be the same. And then I look for my entry over here. And I wait for a pullback. Okay, that's pretty much how I enter in trends. The next chart I want to talk about is my daily chart. I have a daily chart on my other screen. You can't see it when I'm recording my screen for videos because it's on my other monitor, but it's right there at the bottom left hand corner. So it's close enough that I can see it easily. This is my daily chart on this. I have a volume profile monthly composite it shows me the month, the monthly volume profile range. I also plot on here the weekly and daily expected levels that I post into discord every day. And how I use this is one, I pay attention to the volume profile, especially if we have some gaps in the development, I'll be looking to come back and fill this. But I use the daily levels and the, the dotted blue lines are the daily expected highs and the dotted red lines are daily expected lows. The solid blue lines are the sigma highs and the solid blue lines and um, the solid red lines are the sigma lows. 96% of the time we close between the sigma levels and 68% of the time we close between the expected levels. So here's Friday's price action. I still have Friday's levels. We popped up above the expected high, which was right here. And we were working our way towards the sigma high. And the lines are mashed together here, but the weekly expected high is also up here. So how I use these are, we opened down here in the middle. And I wait for us to choose a direction. Once we once we got above this one here, I know that I'm gonna probably hit this target, okay? And if we were to come down, once we got below this node right here, I'm pretty confident we're gonna hit this target. So it just helps me to figure out the direction for the day. And then I use these levels for my long range runner targets. You know, if I had gone long here at 60, I would have set my long runner up here at eight, you know, at the at daily expected high. So that's how I use this. I did pop this template is in my uh, templates folder, but you do need volume profile on NinjaTrader to use it uh, for the composite. But if you just want to use a daily chart and mark those levels on there, like I do, you are free to use that. That template's in there for you. And those levels I post into Discord. I also post the volume profile levels and something I forgot to talk about here on this one. And I talk about it in the volume profile a video I made. But when I start in the morning, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark yesterday's volume profile levels. So if I was coming in Friday, I marked Thursdays. So there was value area high. And I do put these levels into Discord so you have them in the morning. We always start with the prior day, almost always start with the prior day levels. So here was value area low from Thursday. Here was value area high from Friday. We never made a full rotation. We Well, we opened above here, above the POC from Friday, Thursday, and we just went up to test the value area high from Thursday. And then it became a resistance and we continued on down. But generally what I look for is a rotation. Now in a case where we have a very tight choppy range, the next day probably opens with a bigger range or the current day. If the current day range is bigger than the prior day range, then you just go with the current day range. All right, also on this chart, I've got break even buttons for you guys. So break even plus two ticks, break even plus four ticks, break even plus eight ticks, and break even plus 20 ticks. There is also um, a trading from chart option. If you click on this, it will turn green. That means it's activated. 
you want to hold the shift key and click on your chart for a buy and you want to use the hold the alt key and click on your chart for sell it will automatically take whatever strategy you've you've got selected and enter that for you hey guys so i made a chart in white for anybody who likes to prefers to use the white chart i only made the entry chart in white you guys can uh, figure it out from there but here we are i have this set to es i've got it on candlesticks on the 2000 ticks candlesticks right here i've got the template for the desktop set up i've got the uh, amigos charts i've got the 60 minute chart i have the 10,000 tick chart five minutes and the daily so you'll be able to see your levels if you plot them the expected highs and lows of the day you can confirm your entries with the five minute if you're entering on the 2000 tick i would absolutely want my 10,000 tick and five minute chart to be aligned you can keep an eye on the hourly chart just for the trend direction and i think it will work similarly to what i'm was doing with Rankos, you know, um, when the trend magic is red and it's below the 20 EMA, we are always in short. When the trend magic is green and above the EMA, we're always in long. I'm on ES, so I made this EMA 20. For NQ, I would keep it at uh, 50. But you certainly got some entries here. You see the little arrow entries. Those are the MACD entries. You can confirm those signals with the trend magic. The MACD, like here, we're always in short. There's so many entries you got to be taking here. This one, this is a small pullback. And then, or you could just use these as entries. Here we go. Every time it's right here, entry. Right here, entry. Right here, entry. Now, this is just for trends this is not going to work well in a, a ranging market so in a, a ranging market you want to identify your range first let me find one here we go trading range you've got the daily open here we're above and below and above and below it we know we're in a trading range so you would mark your highs and your lows wait for the cross you can enter, take your scalp. Remember, we buy low, sell high, and we scalp in a trading range. So, all right, let's talk about entries and trade management. So when I'm trading micros, which I do on my personal account and some of my funded accounts, I trade with this type of strategy. I go for my first target at 25 ticks, which is my scalp portion. My second target, I go for 10 tick, 10 points on NQ which is what I consider um, a scalp. And then I have a, a runner, okay? I'm going in with a 100 tick stop loss, but I move it to wherever it needs to be. I also move these other targets sometimes if I need to be, and then I have it set to break even at 26. That is traditionally how I, I trade. Usually, like say I entered here on this engulfing candle, I would have put my stop up here at the logical level, um, which would probably be a little bit above this R1 target. If I was entering here, which I would have been when I saw this cross here, I would have entered here. My stop would have been at least here below 10, but most likely below 800. I would have probably gone down here to this level. I'm using a wide stop. Now, if you were following my channel for a while, you know I started doing the orb trades to help some of my members in Discord, you know, kind of see if this was a viable strategy. It was something that another YouTuber was doing and making it to pay out like, you know, 40 grand every 10, 15 days on multiple accounts. So since then, this shit hit the fan at Apex and you can't use that strategy anymore. And to be honest, it wasn't a good strategy. What I came to learn is, and I started studying some of the other YouTubers, I don't watch streamers when I'm trading. I have to focus on my charts. It's very distracting to try to watch somebody else trade while you're trying to concentrate on your charts. I don't recommend new traders, any traders do that. You know, I like to focus on what I'm doing. I'll watch streams sometimes after I'm done trading or before, but I never watch them while I'm trading. 
So anyway, this sent me on a little journey and discovery to check out some of the other streamers. And what I found that was that the ones who were making it to these like big paydays with all these funded accounts were all doing kind of the same thing with different strategies. And what they were doing was scalping with a wide or no stop, and they were stopping trading each account at the $300 to $500 a day mark. And it really got me thinking, you know, I have a couple funded accounts, but I don't trade a whole bunch of them like that, you know, and I never thought to do it. So I'm kind of on a mission to do it. I was going to start it with Elite, but that didn't work out when they changed their rules. So now I'm working on Bulinox. I just finished one of my evaluations. They only let you activate one one PA at a time until you get to the buffer and then they'll let you activate another. So I'm doing them one at a time. So I just, a Friday, a Friday I passed the first one. I also have a take profit trader I'm going to do it with. I also have tick tick accounts, but I'm not going to mess with those. Those are my like regular accounts. So uh, we're going to do a couple. We're going to try it. I'm going to try this, you know, traditionally I've not, I'm not good at the evaluations that are intraday that count on realize the gains against you because I'm a, I'm not a scalper. You know, I'm a swing trader and I just struggle to keep those accounts. You'll see I've busted so many of them. So I am now scalping um, and I really hate scalping. I have to say, you know, I started trading scalping a two-legged pullback system and I hated waiting all day for setups and they never came or they came and you only got two points and they went without you, all kind of nonsense. But the way I trade now is I don't, I'm not as disciplined of a trader now. You know, I identify the trend and then I act accordingly. If we're going up, I'm buying. If we're going down, I'm selling. I'm just looking for an entry of value. I don't wait all day for setup. And if we're in a trading range, I'm buying low and selling high with a wide stop and scalping. So this is what I've been testing. I have a new ATM. I am taking 25 ticks on my first target and I have a runner that breaks even at 24 ticks. My stop loss is initially at 100. But again, I'm using a wide stop. Okay, because before I was using a tight stop and I was getting stopped out a lot and that was annoying. So now I'm using a wide stop. And basically, I'm whatever my logical stop is, I'm timesing by five. So if I entered here, my stop belonged here, I'm moving it down like by five. And the theory with that is to me is, you know, if I have a tight stop and I lose five trades, now I don't lose as many trades, but the one that I lose is going to be the equivalent. So it, I don't know, it kind of works out the same, but I'm going to get stopped out less. So I'm hoping it improves my win rate. So this is what I'm using. I have put different ATM strategies into the Google Drive for this here, and I have have ones for NQ, Gold, Oil, and ES. So here is my ES strategy. I'm scalping for six ticks, and then I've got a runner set at four... 40 for 10 points that breaks even at six ticks. I've set it up to go in at 50. You can adjust that as you need to. And here we go for gold and oil. Same thing. I'm taking 12 ticks and then 24, but I'm moving that around. I go in at 40 and adjust it as I need to. Now you can absolutely do this on micros, but I have been trading minis using this and it's working pretty well. I have downloaded some market replay. We're gonna take a couple trades. This is from Thursday. Setting up at 9.33, the market just opened. We can see here on the medium brick chart that the IB box just started to form. We can see from the large brick chart that we have a lot of gap in the profile, but we are above the prior day high and we were coming back into it. We are above the yesterday's value area high we have a naked POC and we have not retested value area low I can also see we gapped up I've marked the gap on this chart right here that gap is the low of the day this turquoise line is the daily open this is where the market opened we opened we came down a little bit started to fill the gap and then we tanked up I've got the high of the day marked off here and I can see this zone at 70 to 80 is a good a zone all right so i've marked off my round numbers i've got 20 70 to 80 which aligns to the open right here and then 40. And we really don't have anything significant obviously nine 900 is going to be a significant level because it's a major round number but got one there all right so i've got my zones 
drawn. Now what I'm going to be looking for is my, for short entries, I want my Trend Magic here to be yellow. I want it to be below the 50 EMA. I want the MACD ideally to be red. I want the red line to be above the blue line on the MACD cross down here. And I want to have um, negative delta. I'm still looking for shorts because my large bricks are still red. But I do see the mediums either are going to make an engulfing candle or they're, nope, they're turning red. I'm going to take Order the short filled. here. I'm going to move my runner down here to the daily open. Target filled. All right, I got my scout. Uh, my runner is at break even. Now I can manage this a couple different ways and it really depends on what you're doing. Like if you're in an intraday calculating unrealized gains, I would probably close it when I got my first green brick. Otherwise I would set it, you know, at a logical level. Actually, I'm going to get this one out at 70 or when a green brick prints or a blue one. So my clear target is the daily open. I'm going to now hold my control key and I'm going to attach it to my half trend. I'm going to trail two ticks. And let's see how it goes. Target filled. There you go. Target filled. One trade, $700. All right. Here we are in micros now. I've downloaded some historical data from Friday. I'm going to take two trades. The first one's going to be a scalp with a runner on micros. I'm using 11 micros. I'm going to take six for my first target. That'll be, you know, five for the scout portion and one to cover the commissions because micros are expensive. And then I'm going to use tw uh, five as a runner. So basically I'm breaking up one E-mini into two portions. You don't have to do that. If you just want to take the scout, you just can do one contract. I'm taking at least 25 ticks for the first portion because some of the prop companies have more strict rules now. So if you're trading on my funded futures or you know any of those ones that are picky about micro scalps, you're taking at least 25 ticks so they can't really complain. So this this will keep us out of the doghouse is my kind of perspective on that. But same strategy, we're going to go in with that. It's 9:37 here. I marked off the high and the low. I marked off the round number levels. We have a, a major level at 700. And I can see if I look to the left how many times it's touched. The next level I see is 30. Again, if you look to the left, it's touching. The next level I see is 50. And you can see we're chopping around here. But I also see the New York open up here. And if we can get to 50, we're going to get to that. So I don't need a level there. Basically, at this point in time, we are ranging between 30, which is where the VWAP is, and the pivot point, the daily pivot, and the high. Okay, so I'm coming over here, and I see that the IB box populated, and it opened at the top, which that means we're going to come down. All right, so at this point, I see on the medium bricks, we're in a trading range. I see on the small bricks, we're on a trading range. I see on the large bricks, we're on a trading range. I mean, we're on an uptrend. Okay, so that aligns with my theory that we're going up to here. Still in a trading range. I would see this and think we're in a trading range with an upward bias. So I would be more inclined to take longs, but I still would probably scalp on the short side. So now we've broke above here. I see that delta changed. I'm going to wait for a red brick and then I'm going to enter and take a short scout. I'm going to put my, leave my runner target down here at the bottom zone. My stop's going to go up above 811. 
how I'm going to manage this if I'm wrong, because I've got such a big stop is, you know, I'm just going to wait for a pullback and get out with the smallest loss possible. Okay, whoa, whoa, here we go. So I want to sell chart. Let me put my sell right here. Order submitted. I was talking, so I didn't enter right away, but hopefully I, I will make it. Order filled. I'm in. My stop's going up here. My other target is going down here. I'm going to leave my scalp right where it is. Now I'm on 11 micros here. I'm taking 6 at 25 ticks, and I'm taking 5 at 154 ticks. That would be 385 and 75. Let's speed this up a little bit. Now, if this goes above this pivot here, which it might because it's a trading range, but we know we have a long bias, so we're not going to mess around with that. If it goes above this pivot here, I'm going to wait for the next pullback and I'm going to get out with a, a smaller loss than ideal. I mean, it could shoot right up here to 800 on me. You know, it, this probably isn't the best setup, but I just want to get it done for the reference. I mean, we are in a trading range, but we just did break out of the top. Yes, we'll probably get the scalp here, but probably not the runner. Maybe, but this is trading range rules. This is how you do it. But I waited for Delta to turn over, and I saw the Delta turned over here. So we're getting in. Let's do it. Target filled. Got our target. We're at break even. Okay. Now how we can manage this is we could just hold the control key and attach it to the trend magic okay or we could just trail two bars back or we could just get out on the first green brick I it really depends on your preference if you're I probably will just attach it to the trend magic but if you are in one of those accounts where intraday unrealized gains count against you you might want to just set a target for your runner at 10 points and just get out. You, you know, you, those are the ways I would manage it. So let's just attach it to the trend mat. Uh, let's attach it to the half trend. See how it goes. Speed this guy up. I don't know why I'm not attached to this. I should have been taken out here. Weird. Target filled. Okay, I don't know what happened there. Something weird happened, but ended up hitting my target. All right, so 11 micros, we got 452. That was one trade. We're done for this account for the day. So I'm going to start with this one Bulanox and I'm going to start scalping and seeing if I can, you know, build my way up to 20 accounts and recreate, you know, what those other YouTubers did. I think so. I think it seems like it's working. You know, I'm still testing out the ATMs, so we'll see. It's a work in progress, but I'm basically applying my swing strategies to scalps. You know, I'm taking the swing and the scalp in one setup. I wanted to make this video. I'm sorry it was long, but... You know, I wanted to go through all the charts and, and how I really like analyze the market and, you know, what I look for when I'm going to enter, you know, and, and the one thing I'll say is I don't take any entries unless I know what the target is, but I think my charts are very easy to see the entries. The VWAP is green. The EMA is below the half trend, which is blue. I got a little pullback and entry right off the New York open. The blue line is above the red line on the MACD and my delta is green. This is a good entry for a long. Now here's a great entry for a short. I've got the half trend is yellow. That means shorts. It is below the 50 EMA. The VWAP is red and it is above the 50 EMA. 
the red line is above the blue line the delta is red i've got a good entry i probably would take it right here off of this round number level right below 900 i'd put my stop way up here i'm certainly going to get the scalp i've got a target below in sight i don't want to wait for it to go too much lower because then I won't get an entry. I need to have enough room to get my target. So I'm gonna start posting my session trades, my live tr trading session videos, and hopefully now that I'll make more sense, you know, what I'm doing and, and what some of the terminology I use means, you know, my logical levels. I would encourage you, if you want to really understand better what I'm doing, to watch my video on IB and volume profile as well as the round numbers video and the Rankos. If you're not familiar with Rankos, I made a video on Rankos. Okay guys, that's all I've got for this video. In the video description, you're gonna find a link to my Google Drive. In there, you're gonna find folders for chart templates, NinjaTrader 8 indicators. There's lots of indicators in here, all free. We've got tons of reading materials. There are copies of my personal charts in here for you. If you're interested in joining the Discord, just leave a comment below. If you're in the Discord, I've got channels set up in there for most of the time we're hanging out in the main channel. But if you go to the bottom here, Vance goes live every day. Once in a while, I go into the live channel as well. I post the weekly, monthly, and daily expected moves. I post the volume profile levels for each day. We share any coupons or deals we come across. You know, we have a channel for epic wins and losses. You know, we're here to cheer you on or give you a hug, whatever is appropriate. Any prop account bullshit goes in here. Boy, that's an active channel right now. The indicator library is here. Everyone is sharing indicators in the Discord. You know, this is a community space. We're here to support each other, and we use the Discord to do that. Uh, NinjaTrader 8 templates people share in there. We've got some TradingView templates. There are a lot of learning resources. If you come into the Discord, I would encourage you to go through there. Just a little start here. Explains the rules. There really aren't any rules. Just basically don't be an asshole. And then here is, I have a channel for my YouTube. If you are a YouTuber and you have a channel, feel free to share it. I mean, there's no competition here. All right, guys, have a great day. I will see you in the next video. Bye.